Howdy howdy. Mm. Few things make me happier than when I feel like I can give you something back. In this case, maybe you can walk away a little wiser, or I can at least debunk a pointless myth for you. These fast food myths have become popular enough that they've even gotten news coverage and become widespread across the world, despite many of them sounding absolutely ridiculous. So let's check out the 10 most widespread fast food myths and hopefully debunk them. Also, if you do believe these myths, or if you did, please don't take my criticizing to heart. I'm only criticizing these myths and certainly not you as a person. Regardless of what you believe, I hope you at least find this interesting. Anyway, let's begin. For number 10, Waiters or fast food staff will spit in your food if you're rude. When you've been to a restaurant in the past, it's likely at one point you've been underwhelmed by the service. You might have even complained or sent something back. And depending on how harsh you were, did a part of you ever wonder, are they going to spit in my food? Well, to answer this, I put the question to you. Did you ever work in fast food or did you know someone who works in fast food? If so, was someone ever rude to you? That's almost rhetorical. Of course a customer was rude to you. Afterwards, did you you ever consider spitting in their food? The answer to this is probably, of course not, that's disgusting. Most of the time, spitting in someone's food doesn't even cross a person's mind. The reality is, when you're rude to a server, most of the time they'll go into the kitchen and call you a cow or a butthead, or a <laughs> something much more colorful. Or maybe they'll charge you a little extra for something insignificant. Two pats of butter, that's extra, oh goody goody. Or they'll stop pouring coffee or water at your table. That's probably it. But apart from basic common sense, why wouldn't they spit in your food? Well, as mentioned before, it's obviously disgusting, but it's also very illegal. And most fast food restaurants are covered in cameras where the bosses can see in. In America, food tampering is considered a serious crime. And of course, the worst that can happen is not just instant dismissal. The penalties could change a person's life. In Florida alone, the penalties for food tampering include up to $10,000 in fines or up to 15 years imprisonment. Jeebus. So at the end of the day, it really isn't worth it to a low-income staff member to spit in your food. If they're seen on camera, it could ruin their lives. Or hopefully they just consider it gross and don't want to. In my experience in fast food, I mostly just went out the back afterwards and sneered about how annoying they were. I didn't spit in their coffee, ugh. Or a staff member might just glare at you. That's it. Cosmos knows I've gotten a few glares over the years. When I remember, I generally try to respond with a thumbs up. Barnacle head. Pardon me? You forgot your mayonnaise. Number nine. McDonald's soft serves are made of pig fat. Over the years, McDonald's has had its fair share of urban legends, and not all of them are very pretty. In fact, many of them are downright disgusting. Like earthworms in burgers, ew, or cow eye, Ugh, I'll go into that later, or mutant meat, or what? Who comes up with this? Some of them I've even debunked before, such as pink slime and chicken nuggets. It's just centrifuge meat, and it's actually pretty clean, healthy stuff. It just doesn't look very pretty. It's not used anymore though, so don't worry. But seriously, what twit came up with this one? Did this soft serve myth come from any information source or did they just pull it out of their own rear? So how'd this rumor start? Well, apparently pork products can be used in pretty sneaky, unexpected places. For example, the gelatin in marshmallows is made by boiling pig bones into broth. The same with jello. There's no pig fat in them though, just pig bones, much better. Well, here's the reality. Macca's ice cream is not made of pig fat. It's just milk, sugar, cream, corn syrup, and natural flavors. That's it. There's no big secret of pig fat there, just basic stuff. But the rumor of pig fat was so widespread that eventually McDonald's ended up addressing it directly. On the subject, McDonald's had this to say. Our ice cream does not contain pig fat. Our soft serves and thick shakes get their thickness from our cooling and blending process, as well as some common thickeners. So there. Huh, well, you showed me. I mean, realistically, there's only one way I know of to put pig fat in ice cream. And it was a fad for a while. People have done it before. And we discussed it before in Stupidest Fast Foods. Remember the bacon sundae? Just order one of that. That's pig fat in your ice cream. Some people thought this bacon sundae idea was so cool, but do they realize they're directly asking McDonald's to put pig fat in their ice cream? I mean, not that I mind. I'm not judging or anything, but it just definitely wasn't my thing. 
If you are curious though, just Google the ingredients of the soft serve online. It's right there all pink and naked. Number 8. Restaurants have the right to not serve you. You've probably seen it on signs before. Restaurants will put up endless signs saying they reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. And they do have the right to refuse service in some cases, but they do not have the right to refuse service to you for any reason. If we look at the law on this, they can refuse service in special circumstances. For example, if a person poses a physical threat to a restaurant or its patrons, then they can refuse service to someone. Or say you brought a dog into the restaurant. That could be a hygiene threat. Then there's more recent hygiene threats, like not wearing a mask during a global airborne plague. It could also be a hygiene threat if you walked into a restaurant in your underwear. Or if a person's drunk and disorderly, that could be another physical threat. These are potential threats to a restaurant's patrons and themselves, but the restaurant cannot refuse service to you for any reason. In fact, a restaurant can get in more trouble for not serving you, particularly if it's something like discrimination. Discrimination can be against race, gender, sexual preference, age, disability, that sort of thing. But what's the difference between refusing service for, say, being drunk, or actual discrimination? Well, I believe the key here is behavior. Is the person's voice slurred? Are they stumbling? Do they think they're hilarious? Are they naked? If any of these things, they're probably drunk. Some other reasons to refuse service include if you cannot or will not pay, or a person may have such poor hygiene that it causes concern for health and safety. So, you know, have a shower and you'll probably be fine. So rather than your typical restaurant sign, which says, We have the right to refuse service to anyone. It would be more accurate if it said, We have the right to refuse service only if you are aggressive, intoxicated, pose health concerns, or we are at capacity. Yeah, I like that sign better. But obviously, I'm not suggesting you be a jerk about this at restaurants. Most of the time, if a restaurant annoys you, the best thing you can do is just walk out of the restaurant. Chances are, they're not worth your time. And for seven lucky seven. Local Chinese restaurants serve dog meat. There's a good chance you've heard of this one before. The weirdly widespread legend is that Chinese restaurants in the USA, supposedly they use really cheap meat, such as cat, dog, or rat meat. Okay. But the reality is nowadays is that health guidelines such as the Federal Meat Inspection Act would never allow this, nor would the FDA food code. Then we have to go into each state's individual animal cruelty laws. It would just never happen. So let's first establish if dog meat is even legal to sell in countries such as USA or England or Australia. The three have similar levels of food and safety standards. In these countries, dog meat in a restaurant is very unlikely. In fact, it's illegal in England, America and Australia to import or sell dog meat. To quote the British Parliament, Dog meat trade is illegal here. Britain is a nation of animal lovers, and we will continue to have some of the highest animal welfare standards in the world. Though they still serve haggis, which I consider human cruelty. Besides, it's going to be a lot cheaper for your average Chinese restaurant to sell you chicken or a cow instead of dog meat. Look at KFC. USA chows down on 21 million chickens a day. Does it honestly seem like we have a meat shortage in our countries? To quote the Chinese food chefs Sam and Amy, Think about it. Which is more common to source? Dog meat or chicken and beef? Are there any factories specialising in breaking down those other animals? Wouldn't it be easier and cheaper to just buy pre-packaged chicken, beef or pork in bulk? However, that being said, countries like China and South Korea have not always been as lucky as us. And in the past, they've had much less meat available than we've had in Western countries. And sometimes, dog was just one of the very few meats available. So dog meat was consumed in limited amounts. For example, during the Great Chinese Famine, people couldn't just pop down to KFC or Domino's for chicken or a plant-based pepperoni pizza. They were forced to eat whatever they could find, including rats, cats and dogs. And for a long time after the famine, dog became a traditional meat source. But over the decades, as the money to China has increased, so has the quality of the meat. In fact, when the 2010 Beijing Olympics were in town, the Chinese government chose to remove dog meat from the Chinese menu. Apparently, they wanted to remove the risk of offending international visitors. During this time, support from pet owners grew exponentially, with living standards increasing and disposable income growing. And with more high quality meat available, it seems as though the law 
pass through. Because as of 2020, the slaughter of dog meat is illegal. And I know this segment's long, so let's briefly cover South Korea, which is also the other country known for dog meat. There, the dog meat trade has been controversial for decades. And during that time, the sale of dog meat just keeps dropping per year. Even if it isn't illegal per se, there just isn't a big market for dog meat there. For example, the largest dog meat market, the Moran market, shut down in 2018 due to lack of sales. And a 2020 study found that 84% of Koreans had never eaten dog meat nor did they have any plans to do so. Fun fact though, in Canada, it actually is legal to slaughter and consume dog meat. That being said, when I visit my uncle in Canada and I go to Tim Hortons, I don't tend to see roast dog on the menu. Anyway, anyway, chances are if you're in a Western country and the health authorities saw Fido on the plate, they'll probably have a few questions for the owner. And what do we got at number six? Fast food chains have a secret menu. You may have heard the rumor before that places like Starbucks and McDonald's have a top secret menu, and it operates like a secret society, where if you whisper the fast food worker the secret menu item, they'll go, whoa, you know the secret menu, and they'll show you a whole new range of strange fast food items. I'm not making fun, by the way, that actually sounds like an awesome idea. Hack the Menu has a list of some of McDonald's secret items. These included the Big Mac and Cheese, the Caramel Apple Sundae, and the Apple Pie McFlurry. Personally, I think the most creative secret menu item I saw was the Big McChicken. Apparently it's like a Big Mac, but with chicken patties instead of buns. Seems quite similar to that KFC Double Down Burger. And even if a staff member's not willing to put it together for you, a lot of these secret menu items, you could probably just buy the two items and put it together yourself. For example, buy the apple pie, then the McFlurry, and just dump the apple pie in. You've got an apple pie McFlurry. Starbucks in particular has a very widespread legend of this secret menu. I've even heard staff complain that some customers will go up to them and say, Don't worry, I know the secret menu. Wink. But again, the idea of it does sound pretty cool. It would be pretty fun if there was a mysterious menu that was known to fast food workers, but hidden from the public. But the reality in terms of Starbucks is, employees will pretty much make you whatever you want. If you want straight chocolate syrup in your cup, they can probably make that for you. You could say it's from your own secret menu and call it the sugary mud nightmare. Anyway, from my research, there doesn't appear to be any evidence to back up this secret menu. Certainly no secret menu that Starbucks staff know about anyway. If you think about it, it'd have to be secret dishes and drinks that all employees know how to make. Each secret menu item has to have a name and an ingredients list. But what fast food chain is going to train thousands of staff members to serve items they're never going to serve? In my own previous fast food and barista experience, it was hard enough to teach some staff how to make basic menu items. Some chains are hard pressed just teaching staff how to make a coffee or just prepare a burger yet alone how to make all these secret burgers. On Thrillist, food writer Lee carefully researched all these secret menu items. He then began an experiment where he went out to see if he could order some of these items. In response, he got a lot of eye rolls and a few laughs. In the end, his conclusion was that secret menu items just don't exist. But he did get inside information on what fast food staff think of the idea. Turns out a lot of staff just hate the idea of a secret menu, and it just mostly serves to annoy them. Personally, if I was still working fast food and I had the time, I'd gladly make some of these secret menu items. Fast food can be a really repetitive business. Why not play along and say, yeah, I'll make you that secret menu item. Just keep it to yourself. In-N-Out Burger had fun with a secret menu item as well. They even list their secret menu on their website, or as they call it, the not-so-secret menu. And it's actually pretty neat. It includes things like the 3x3 burger, the double meat burger, or the animal style burger. Man, some of these secret menu items have really cool names. Personally, I don't mind this myth. It doesn't do anyone any harm. And if you're not too busy and you're a staff member, you can make this myth happen. So why not? All right, now for number five. Chuck E. Cheese recycles their pizza. And just a reminder, this isn't an attack on anyone who believes this rumor or any particular rumor starters. Even if I don't respect people who start conspiracies for profit, this isn't a direct attack on them. This is just an attack on those baseless, vapid, damaging conspiracies. And just what is this conspiracy? Well, apparently there's a rumor that Chuck E. Cheese Frankensteins their pizza. 
This particular conspiracy seems to have been started by a YouTuber called Shane. Apparently, he's into making conspiracy videos. And back in 2019, he had a theory. A food theory. A theory that is probably not packed with credible evidence, but let's press on. Apparently, as a child, Shane remembered going to Chuck E. Cheese and ordering pizza. He thought it was weird that some of the slices were oddly shaped and didn't line up. So based on this childhood memory, apparently, he made a wild, very monetizable theory. His theory was that Chuck E. Cheese takes your old, uneaten pizza slices from the table, reheats them, and makes them into a new pizza to serve again. And I guess that pizza goes to the next unlucky customer. Now, I'm not normally one to defend a giant corporation, but why would Chuck E. Cheese possibly do this? Sure, it may be a massive violation of FDA rules, cause mass food poisoning lawsuits, and destroy the reputation of a franchise, getting it permanently shut down. That's bad. But it could save a few dollars a day on dough. Yeah, it's good. Anyway, the video went viral on YouTube, and Twitter saw a sea of responses to his video. Apparently, based on seeing this video, some people believed the theory and became outraged at Chuck E. Cheese. Some demanded an explanation as to why their pizzas weren't perfectly round-shaped. Eventually, Chuck E. Cheese did relent and respond to the hype. Their response was... The claims made about our pizzas are completely false. No conspiracies here. Our pizzas are made to order, so they may not be uniform in shape, but they are always delicious. Shane gave further... <clears throat> evidence by showing how weird this pizza looked in this Instagram photo. Yes, it's a photo of a pizza you didn't see prepared. Perhaps a photographer could have just moved the pizza slices? You know, maybe he did it to get attention on social media? No, really, do you think? That doesn't seem like it would be a foreign concept to a YouTube conspiracy channel. Now again, I'm not trying to attack anyone here. I get it, without your attention, I couldn't pay the bills. But personally, I think what we say to people when we have your attention is important. Anyway, there are other Twitter polls that rode this bandwagon too, including Evan on Twitter. They exclaimed, Okay, but can you explain this? I get they don't need to be perfect, but I mean... Again, it's a picture of a pizza. How about just checking in the kitchen to see how they're made? Or better yet, why not just ask a Chuck E. Cheese staff member? And that's the part that just got me the most. It's not like Chuck E. Cheese's secret service. Did no one who believes these conspiracies actually work at Chuck E. Cheese? Didn't any of them at least know someone who works there? The staff would be the ones doing this nefarious pizza recycling. And I'm sure a staff member could clear this up in an instant. Fast food staff are underpaid and overworked since when have they tried to protect their business? Luckily, amidst all this upheaval, eventually, an ex-Chuck E. Cheese staff member did take the stand. And he calmly explained the process of making a pizza at Chuck E. Cheese. Payton offered a perfectly logical explanation for these misshapen pizzas. Our pizza needs to be cut into 12 slices each time. And in a busy kitchen, that is hard. Sometimes in a rush, you quickly cut the pizza into 10 slices. Then you realize the mistake and you have to find a big slice and cut that in half. Basically, it's just the staff being busy and also not giving a crap. By the cosmos, actually consulting a Chuck E. Cheese staff member about a Chuck E. Cheese pizza? Oh my God. Brilliant Twitter. Took you long enough. And I can completely agree with what Payton is saying. Personally, I worked at seven different pizza shops. I can concur, you get very busy. And pizzas do get cut oddly all the time. Sometimes the dough gets misshapen so it looks strange. Particularly when I used to cut pizzas, they just look terrible. In fact, my terrible cutting of pizzas is why Domino's and Pizza Hut rarely ever let me cut pizzas. And that's the story of how I got fired from another job. Okay, yeah, I'm okay, thanks, Boo. Let's move on. And coming in at number four... Fast food and waiting tables is only for those who are young, talentless, or waiting for their next career move. This one is absurd, as simply put, jobs aren't easy for everyone. Particularly if you're a person who mentally struggles to maintain a full-time job. For example, if you're a person with depression, schizophrenia, or post-traumatic stress disorder, you may struggle to get up five days a week, eight hours a day, and fight through traffic to get to an office. Or someone on the spectrum might find it difficult to constantly deal with the stimuli of noises and people all week. Or they may just come across poorly in interviews. I know I sure did. 
So part-time jobs with more flexible hours can be much more appealing to some people. In fact, research shows that more than 50% of US adults over the age of 25 have worked in the food industry at least once. And there are many college graduates working in fast food, such as Ain Zhang, who posted this TikTok video of her receiving her Bachelor of Science degree in chemistry. With honors too, nice. Then it shows this honors student working at KFC. But she also shows herself to be genuinely grateful for her job and have a positive outlook on it. Sure, she might be looking for something else, but she's certainly not talentless. Nor were many of her commenters. Many commenters were also graduates working in fast food. Many respected her positive attitude and wished her good luck. SpongeBob's another example. He may be fictional, but he also represents how wrong this myth is. At times, he's shown himself to be very intelligent. And in Season 2 episode Paddy Hype, he bought the Krusty Krab and he technically owns it. And Spongebob doesn't qualify as particularly young either. If you count him by seasons, he's actually about 43 years old. Spongebob works in fast food because he likes working in fast food. In my own personal experience of being on the spectrum and job searching, I worked as a service station attendant and a barista for over 8 years. If not for YouTube, I would probably still be there. Are you saying I'm not talented? <laughs> Well, fair point, yeah. But what I'm trying to say is, when you see that younger or older fast food worker, they're not necessarily untalented, unintelligent, or trying to get out of the job. Some people actually enjoy making coffees, waiting tables, and fast food work. Or it might be the best they can currently get in a difficult job market. Or maybe they have friends they like working with there. Of course, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with aiming for a higher paying job. But the world needs a lot more baristas and fast food workers than it does astronauts, movie stars, and doctors. That's just the reality of it. So I personally think we should thank fast food workers for this rather than judge them for it. And next at number three. MSG is bad for you. Uh, this myth is as bad as those ones on how supposedly terrible milk is. Spoiler, it's fine. Milk isn't essential to your diet, but it's fine. Personally, I'd just recommend skim milk. Anyway, you may have noticed MSG mentioned on packets in supermarkets or on Chinese takeaway menus. Many proudly boast the lines, no added MSG. Because of misinformation and lack of fact checking, it's become a common myth that MSG is somehow bad for you. So this no MSG is boasted in order to ease the consumer's mind. Personally, I just googled clinical trials MSG and debunked this one in about 20 seconds. But first, a little history on this dreaded MSG. For many years, the good old FDA has been flooded with complaints about MSG. Many people have claimed all sorts of self-reported side effects like headaches, nausea, weakness, or even a fluttering heartbeat. A fluttering heartbeat? That does sound pretty serious. Though it's worth noting, all those symptoms have a huge range of possible causes. According to Science Friday, MSG breaks down into two forms, sodium and monosodium glucamate. Both of these components are safe for your body to ingest. MSG is basically just a salt found naturally in some foods such as tomatoes, cheese, and seaweed. MSG has been eaten throughout history, but it was first specifically extracted for cooking in 1908. But let's not waste any time. To the research, a systematic review from the National Library of Medicine did a thorough review of MSG. They analyzed several blinded studies, aka the participants didn't know if they were or weren't having MSG. These studies showed zero adverse effects from MSG, as long as the subjects didn't know they were eating MSG. If they knew it was MSG though, they might get the symptoms. This is called the placebo effect, where you feel sick because you think something has made you sick, even if it's harmless. As well as these studies, organizations such as the FDA, World Health Organization, and European Food Safety all recognize MSG as safe. Personally, if I were to guess why people were reacting to what they think was MSG, I think it might have more to do with the excess salt in some Chinese foods. Excess salt can lead to some temporary dehydration, and dehydration is among the leading causes of headaches. So have a glass of water. Simple. Not a big deal. But that all being said, some people could still have a sensitivity to MSG. But from what I could find, there is certainly no scientific evidence that MSG is bad for you. And even if you are MSG sensitive, the symptoms are mild. According to nutritionist Catherine from the Mayo Clinic, 
symptoms are temporary and almost never need to be treated. So MSG or not, chances are you'll be okay. And what do we got for number two? McDonald's 100% beef allows for including things like eyeballs. Chicken nuggets were supposedly made of bad stuff, now the beef patties are made of bad stuff. I guess we'll debunk this one too. Are the beef patties where they stick all the scary stuff? The myth says while McDonald's labels their meat 100% beef, supposedly you aren't eating all the expected parts of the cow. Without getting too graphic, these myths tend to go for all the cringiest stuff possible. Like cow eyeballs or cow lips? Okay, I guess there's no kissing cows for these conspiracy theorists. They felt if they included all the squeamish parts of the cows, McDonald's could still call it 100% beef. But could they? So ThoughtCo took a crack at debunking this one. They started by looking how economically advantageous it would be for McDonald's to replace their cow meat with cow eyeballs. But it turns out it was actually way more expensive for them to use cow eyeballs instead of cow meat. What they actually do is sell the cow eyeballs to colleges and research facilities. What a great idea. I wonder if that's part of why our laser eye technology is so good. We've had so much research on eyeballs. Even the United States Department of Agriculture pulled up their sleeves to debunk this theory. Their report said, Any beef byproducts need to be disclosed. And McDonald's wouldn't be able to label eyeball filled meat as 100% beef anyway. So there you have it, straight from the cow experts themselves. Eyeballs are not even considered meat, and it's way more expensive to turn them into patties than actual meat. But while we're at it, let's debunk the myth about worms being in beef patties too. That's right, apparently some people think McDonald's beef patties are a wormy, eyeball-filled mess. This room has been around for decades now, and apparently it's how some people thought McDonald's saved money on their burgers. But in reality, these little guys aren't going into burgers, they're mostly being used to keep the soil healthy. The founder of McDonald's, Ray Kroc, even spoke out to silence these worm critics. He boldly made this statement. A pound of worms cost more than twice as much as ground beef. That's just a pretty illogical filler choice. You people think I'm made of money? And that's the thing, if there's one thing we can count on, it's a large corporation looking at the profitability of something. This one's been debunked on countless sites. And the thing is, many of us know someone who works at McDonald's, or we've worked there ourselves. Around the world, approximately 2.2 million people work at McDonald's. If you know someone who's worked there, or you've worked there yourself, ask yourself or that staff member. Did you ever see worms in the pre-cooked patties? Hello. If a fast food job is stressful and underpaid, many staff are more than willing to bash it. So chances are, they'll give you the most brutally honest answer possible, but it probably doesn't include worms. Number one. Ah. McDonald's food won't decay because it's so full of preservatives. This rumor has been around so long, I don't actually know where it started. But a popular example is a viral video where someone left a McDonald's burger out for 20 years. And 20 years later, it still looked okay. It hasn't changed. But the thing is, if McDonald's food actually didn't decay, I don't think that would be bad. That would be a freaking scientific revolution. McDonald's burgers could be shipped in mass to starving countries that couldn't afford refrigeration. But unfortunately, in reality, McDonald's burgers rot just like any other food. Whoa, what? But the key to food rot is moisture. And the McDonald's hamburger is so small and thin that it dries super quickly. Particularly after being on a hot grill, it all dries before bacteria can form on the moisture. Because once the moisture in a food is gone, it can't rot. Beef jerky is a good example of this. We dry out meat into jerky so it can survive for a long time without going moldy. So jerky can be helpful to say travelers or sailors who have to go on a long trip without refrigeration. If I want to go into the mountains for a long time and need some easy meat, I can bring some jerky. It looks like I could possibly bring a hamburger too, but I don't know if I'd risk that. Plus, the burgers are cooked on a searingly hot stove in a food safe environment. This kills a lot of the potential bacteria. The culinary consultant from Sirius Eats tested this myth. He cooked some homemade burgers identical in shape and size to the McDonald's burgers. And like the smaller McDonald's burgers, his smaller home cooked burgers didn't rot either. He left his burgers out for a month and they still looked just as fine as the McDonald's burgers. However, larger burgers like the McDonald's Quarter Pounder did start to rot before they dried out. 
So yeah, while McDonald's is unhealthy, their unhealthiness doesn't have to do with why their hamburgers don't rot. The rotting has far more to do with how much moisture is in a food. Any food without moisture will not rot. That's just drying out meat. We've been doing it for hundreds of years. This 20 year old hamburger is now a literal jerky burger, though I definitely recommend you don't eat it. Anyway, I'd certainly enjoy hearing your opinion on these myths. Have you heard of them before? Do you still believe any of these myths? If you like, feel free to let me know your opinion in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and hopefully I might see you next time. Bye bye. Today's member question is from Fairfax Video Mark II. They ask, is there any healthy fast food or is it just a myth? That's a good question. There certainly are healthier fast foods. It's just a matter of ordering smart. For example, my personal favorite is a Taco Bell burrito bowl with chicken, but without ranch, cream, and cheese. I instead just add some tomato and chili sauces, and this gives it a nice flavor. So it ends up a lovely combination of guacamole, chicken, black beans, seasoned rice, and lettuce. It tastes good, and unlike a lot of fast foods, it doesn't leave me bloated. I'll eventually do a video on the healthiest and least healthy fast foods is something that I'm personally quite passionate about sharing with you.